COVID-19 isolation can, you know, wear down even the most enduring person. There's only so much binge watching of Tiger King or Schitt's Creek or web surfing or family games of Scrabble one can really endure. So I suggest a change of pace, and that is to go outside at night, of course, only in your backyard, and look up. If it's not cloudy, you may see a cosmic show for the ages, and best of all, it's free. Joining me is Connor Stone, a PhD candidate at the Physics and Astronomy Department at Queen's University, and who is also the public coordinator of Queen's University Observatory, located here in Kingston, Ontario. Connor, as an astronomer, you must be excited on several fronts. Less sky pollution, of course, but a cosmic event that is coming our way in the form of a comet called Atlas. What can, what can you tell me about this uh, cosmic event? Very exciting event for us. Over the course of the next month or so, the comet Atlas is going to get brighter and brighter as it gets closer to the sun. And hopefully, we'll be able to see it for ourselves in the night sky just with our eyes. Comets are notoriously unpredictable, so it's hard to say exactly how bright it will get. But um, even if it doesn't get bright enough to see with your eyes, a small pair of binoculars should be enough to pick it out. People say it may be the brightest uh, comet in 20 years, but and I, of course, remember in 1997, comet Hale-Bopp was really uh, impressive. And could it just, just be as bright? And what things have to align to make it the brightest thing in the sky? Hale-Bopp was really quite spectacular. This one, um, we think, may be a fragment of a larger uh, comet. And so it's releasing a lot of gases because it's got newly exposed parts of the comet. As it gets closer to the, sky, to the sun, it'll release more gases, which will shine uh, from the sunlight that they reflect. And so if we can get a large tail for this comet, then it'll, it'll become quite bright for us to see. We're hoping that a lot of material sort of evaporates off the surface of that comet and reflects light for us, for us to see. What, uh, what's the timing of, uh, of, this, uh, of this show over the next uh, month or so? In early to mid-May, that's when it may get bright enough for us to see with our naked eye. And you'll see it sort of in the northwest area of the sky. There are apps for your phone, such as SkyMap, that will help you uh, find where it is on the sky. If you're looking for the constellation Camelopardus or Perseus. And uh, if, you, if you can find it, then you should be able to see sort of a fuzzy gray blob, maybe about half the size of a full moon. And if you have a, a small telescope, you may even be able to pick out that it's got a faint green glow to it because of the carbon molecules that it's emitting. What excites you the most when you have these cosmic events? And I don't know if this is a once in a lifetime comet or if it's on a, on a cycle that comes by like uh, Halley's Comet every, uh, every 76 or so years. What excites you about, uh, about these cosmic events? So it's, it's really special to take part in some of these events. This particular comet hasn't been around for almost 5,000 years. So that's like the beginning of the Egyptian civilization is what we can compare to. So it's, it really places you in a, a larger universal context. You get to have a connection with people 5,000 years ago on a very special experience. Well, that's a good way of, uh, of, of expressing that. I know there's some other uh, cosmic uh, events. Venus is very bright at this, uh, at this moment in time. Besides the comet, what other solar type of events uh, that people can look up and look out for? There's lots of things that you can see just with a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. If you use one of those um, phone apps to help you find stuff, what you're looking for are Messier objects. Really good ones to look at right now would be the Pleiades and the Andromeda galaxy, both of which should be visible uh, just with a small telescope in a dark area. If you're in downtown Kingston, driving just half an hour north and stopping by the side of the road, um, it'll be more than dark enough for you to find these objects and see a whole lot of um, either stars in the Pleiades or the arms of the Andromeda galaxy. 
cool. Before I let you go, you're also the coordinator of the uh, Queen's Observatory, the public uh, tours and stuff. And of course, we look forward to uh, the new normal when it comes after this pandemic is uh, over. What can people expect when you are finally open up at the observatory? Yeah, so when it's safe to open up, we will be running our open houses every month. In uh, the Queen's campus, we have a large telescope that we um, bring out to the public every month. We have an, an astronomer talk about space, and then we take people up to the telescope, show them what sorts of things can be seen at that time of the year. It changes all throughout the year. Every season, there's new stuff that we can look at. And um, we try to bring astronomy to everyone while they're there. So families with small children, up to 100 years old, everybody is welcome. Well, thanks, uh, Connor, for your time. And uh, stay safe during uh, this pandemic. And we uh, wish you all the best. And what do they say in the astronomy world? Good comet hunting. Thanks. Thanks for having me. No problem. Bye.